Welcome back. We are talking about Down syndrome and we've reached the point where you can call in and ask questions about this condition. The number to call is 0808-054-2233. That's 0808-054-2233. You can also tweet at CTV underscore Mary A. Let's find out about this feeding problem. Did you have to wake her up to feed her? Did you had to have like, you were now the clock for her feeding. Mm -hmm. That's Precisely. a lot of responsibility. Precisely. That is a lot and of I've never experienced that before. But she's six now. Are you still having to do that? No. She's doing very well. So she's you can well. tell her, she can, she can tell you she's hungry and yes. she would like to eat. Yes. Is this a normal progression, doctor? She's, it's like she's getting better. She's, uh, how do I say it? Uh, she has developed more from where she was. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us a bit about that? I think it has a lot to do with mom. She has actually put in a lot to allow this child to become self-dependent. And that is really why we're here today, that we need people to recognize an early intervention, all right? Because she would need physical therapy, she needs physiotherapy, she needs occupational therapy, she needs speech therapy. Apart from that, she needs to see her doctor regularly okay. so that all of the conditions, as they, become, um, as they occur, it's nipped in the bud immediately. So I think it has a lot to do with mom, Ms. Tumi, being able to do exactly, you know, training her, teaching her. All right, because for so the involvement is very key. Very but, key. but let me stop you, hold important. you there a bit. We have a call coming in from Abuja. Hello. We've lost the call. Please do try again. Early intervention. If, correct me if I'm wrong, if the mother or the parents don't act in time, would it be correct to say that the child might suffer from things other than the Down syndrome itself? Exactly. Exactly. Because if you're not exercising the brain, you're not um, given those repetitive um, actions, it's almost going to be a retrogression if you don't allow the brain to... Because remember now, the first few years, there's a period of rapid brain, uh, brain growth. That is when the child picks up everything going on. So if you're not um, applying this early intervention, you know, you're not uh, uh, teaching your child, okay, this is how to hold the spoon, mm -hmm. this is how to feed, this is how to brush your teeth, you're going to spend a little extra time mm -hmm. than you would for just a, a, a child without Down syndrome. Okay, we're getting a call from Uju to Edmund. Hello, Edmund. Edmund, are you there? We seem to be having a bit of a problem, but when it comes through, Edmund, I'm here for your questions. Hello, good afternoon, Hello, good afternoon Edmund. Yeah, um, I'm interested in the topic. Thank you. Do you have a question? Hello? Hello? Hello, Edmund. Hello? Do you have a question for us? Okay. Uh, just want to ask that, is there any similarity between Down syndrome and autism? Okay. Okay, thank you for that question. I think you said something about comorbidity, yes. things it happening could. together. Yes. Is there a similarity? Is this, is, that's his question. Uh, no. Um, Down syndrome, we've been able to at least to know why, what's happening. You okay. Know, because of the three chromosome on chromosome 21, that's what's causing it. Now, autism spectrum disorder, we're not exactly sure the cause of it, okay? But they can occur together. Now, it does not mean that every child who has Down syndrome has autism. And, not, and it does not also mean that every child with autism should now be looking for the same increase and all that in all the right. child. Okay. okay. So there are different entities, but they could occur together. Okay, we have another phone call before I come back to you. Hello. Oh, from Abuja again. Hello, are you with us this time? There does seem to be a problem with that connection, but do try. Um, are you able now to do any sort of work? Oh, well, yes, I can say that. Um, I'm able to do any sort of work because um, the first three years, I put in a lot 
you know, to help Moe to like to kickstart her life. Um, she started um, therapy from the age of, apart from the ones I used to do for her, with her, from when she was two weeks old as a baby, up until she was a month old. Just a minute. Okay. I think we've got our caller from Abuja back. Hello. Hello? No, not quite. We didn't quite make it. Go ahead. Up until she was a year old and of course... Was I this go. on instructions of the doctor? I was or googling. just the normal I African googled. mother African exercises? Mother. You know? Go no, no. <laughs> <laughs> not those <laughs> okay. uh, um, Like I said, I've been exposed to a child before in, in, the, in the US and the only thing I, I knew to do was to seek for help. So immediately I called my friend. Oh, they said my daughter has Down syndrome. She was like, it's not true. I said, it's true. So she said, you better don't cry. Wipe your tears. You have to start doing all you got to do to make sure your child has close to a normal life. And most of those things were taught over the phone. Then I had the strength to begin to Google. Sometimes I'll go and read scary stuff and I'll cry, cry, cry again. And, you know, but I did not stop doing what I had to do with and for Moe. So, um, now, how normal is her life? Do, does she go to school? Yes, she goes to school. She goes to school um, and, and goes for therapy three times a week because I have not tried to take out therapy from her Is this a normal school or is it a special it's school? It's a normal school. With other children who don't have Down syndrome? Yes. How so, good is that, doctor? I'm a great advocate of that inclusion, right? Because... I would rather that we have uh, these kids with special needs in a regular school, but with intervention, okay. so that you know the, the teachers have to be enlightened. Well, you know that could mean that they have to tweak their curriculum a bit. Are we ready for that? Mm -hmm. There are some schools that are ready or willing. Unfortunately, uh, most of the time they're in private institutions mm. but yes if we're able to you know a child um, should be able to go to a normal school and then as um, Ms. Mackinder said to be able to have that extra intervention so that if it's whatever therapy you know the teacher just knows they'll spend a little longer time with this child to make them understand than the regular, the, than the regular. We, we seem to be having a call coming in again hello is that Aaron? Hello, are you there? No, that call has not come through properly. Thank you so much, but maybe... Yes, hello. Hello? There's no more time. Anyway, so question I want to ask you. Moni is getting better. Now, she, she can talk to you. Mm -hmm. um, you probably can understand her needs now. She's more independent. But can this person grow up to be independent, have a job, live alone, have children? The, they can get there. They can get there. Supervised living. Okay. All right. Okay. Because, you know, we talked about the level of um, intelligence. Someone who is moderately uh, uh, retarded, you do not want them to live by themselves because then they're not able to appreciate danger. Okay. But if it's a mild degree of mental retardation, they're able to live normal, supervised life. When you say mental retardation, I, I want us to understand and viewers to understand. Are we talking, does the person improve? Is the person just in a position there or is it that the person is just slow to catch on? What, what really do you mean when you say yes, mental retardation? the person is slow to catch on. With intervention, you know, with a lot of work, they're able to catch on. All right? But yes, they're much slower. And you would know that even from, the, right from the beginning, they would not walk at the normal time the for any rate. other child, but they're able to still do it. So they are slow, but yes, they'll get there. They'll get there. Okay. Thank you so and much. And they have children, you asked. Oh, yes. All right. 
most male with Down syndrome are sterile. All right, I have to stop you there. I know we could go on. Thank you so much for coming to the show, Dr. Waji. Thank you so much, Mrs. Uh, Mackinday. So I've loved having you here, and I'm sure the viewers have loved it too. Thank you so much for being with us. I have loved having you with me too on this show. Enjoy the rest of your day. I'm Mary Alale Yusuf. Thank you.